The appointed hour is six o'clock having been reached. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this, meeting, this public hearing of the Town of Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking on a link on the town's webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10 Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with the roll call of the regular members of the ZBA. Um, the Steve Judge the chair is here. Mr. Langsdale. Ms. Parks. Here. Mr. Maxfield. Here. And associate members, Ms. Waldman, Mr. Barrick, Mr. Greeny, Mr. Meadows. Here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner, and Rob Mora, the building commissioner. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of, Com of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from that section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will seek input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on the screen. The chair will, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by the public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is generally when the board deliberates and is not an op generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the application tonight. Each petition is heard by the board as distinct and is evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for the special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20-day appeal, appeal process for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body of the Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded with the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, ZBA 2021-03, Pioneer Property Services, LLC, request a special permit to convert the existing detached garage <laughs> to a residential unit, which will increase the number of residential units converted dwelling from one to two under section 3.3241, 9.22 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 275 East Pleasant Street, map 11B, parcel 63, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. This hearing is continued from February 11th, 2021. We also have the general comment period to to the public to comment on matters not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within 48 hours. The first order of business tonight is ZBA FY 2021-03 Pioneer Property Services. Um, before we begin, uh, I want to acknowledge that Mr. Langsdale is here. Yes, here. Yep, there he's here. Um, I have one disclosure and one report. After our last meeting on this application, I received an email addressed to me and the town staff regarding this application. 
um, email raised questions regarding the ZBA process on and the merits of the specific application. Um, the email does not affect my ability to impartially act on this matter and as part of the public record. Are there any other disclosures? I also have a report. At the last meeting, the board authorized me to determine whether a peer review of the groundwater drainage plan was needed. I met with town staff to review the submitted plans. The town engineer reviewed the plans a second time and agreed to ask Mr. Sparkle for additional information regarding Mr. Sparkle's calculations. We determined that the information from Mr. Sparkle would probably obviate the need for a peer review. Um, sudden, subsequently, the applicant informed the town that they wished to withdraw the application. No peer re review was contracted for this matter. The following submissions, uh, are there any other um, disclosures or notices? If not, the following submissions have been received by town staff. A February 12th email from Mr. Steve Schreiber. A February 27th email from Neil and Jen Mendelson asking to withdraw their application without precedent. And a um, email from the abutters uh, asking for withdrawal with prejudice. Is there a representative of the applicant or the applicant who wishes to withdraw to request this withdrawal? Withdraw? Yes. Neil Mendelson, Pioneer Property Services. All right. Um, are there any comments or questions from the board members? If there are, Mr. Maxfield. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mendelson, I wanted to ask. Um, can I ask why it is that you are? Um, requesting to withdraw without prejudice? Is this, is this just become the process to become too, too cumbersome, too much of a financial burden? Yeah, I think um, I went through this process feeling that I could adapt to the, um, the comments that were received and the board's concerns. And I really tried. Um, and I still think that this project could be a compliment to the neighborhood, um, but it's, it's become obvious that the opposition is very great to it and the burden on my business it's you know i'm a small operation and i just can't afford to keep going so um i regret having to do it but i um i want to do it i want to withdraw um and i'm asking that it be withdrawn without prejudice mr maxfield I just have one follow-up question um if it were the case that the board were to say that we felt we had um, enough evidence as is without requesting any more from you or, or imposing any more costs on you, would you prefer that the board move forward and make a ruling one way or the other uh, with the evidence that we have currently if, if we're not um, you know, coming back asking for necessarily more information outside of what we've, we've gathered over the past several months? Would you want a decision if the board felt we had enough to, to make a decision one way or the other? I would, and as a matter of fact, um, I would be um, not opposed to any conditions that you would propose, um, and including owner-occupied. Um, I, you know, I, I really do have a vision for this building, um, and I think it could be really nice. And I, you know, it's it's kind of a you know a passion of mine, and in a, in a, since I bought the building, since I bought the property. Um, it has been something that has, I wanted to do. And, um, you know, it's, uh, so yeah, I, I am, I am. I would totally work with uh, the town, the board, neighbors, I, you know, to make this come to fruition. That, that is my dream, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Any other comments? Questions from board? All right, if there are no other questions from board members, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing on this matter and open a public meeting on the request to withdraw the application of the special permit. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Maxfield, is there a second? Second. Mr. Meadows seconds. A vote occurs on the motion. This vote requires a majority of the ZBA three members to pass. 
This will be a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Langsdale? No. Mr. Ms. Parks? I need to ask what we're voting on now. Are okay, we're voting to close the hearing and open them a public meeting a public at, on this item. And then we can have discussion amongst the board members on this item. Not to close, we're voting to adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> adjourn. The person who always catches me with adjourn to adjourn the meeting and um, open a public meet, adjourn the hearing, open a public meeting on the application. Then the board members can discuss at that time the uh, application, the request to withdraw. Yes, Ms. Pollock. Um, I, I believe uh, uh, Attorney Joel Bard has raised his hand. Okay. Um, well, hold on, we're in the middle of a vote. Let's, yeah. let's vacate, let's vacate the vote and then we'll, we'll start again. We, we should not be having discussions except one clarification on the vote during the middle of the vote. So let's vacate the vote and we'll start it up again. Um, Mr. Mr. Bard, you said has a- Yeah, I, um, yeah. Um, Joel, uh, can you speak? Uh, I did ask to unmute. Um, ask to unmute. So uh, maybe his mute is not working. His unmute. Um. All right. Well. Uh, okay. Well, never Good mind. Continue. Um. Okay. I I think in your motion you may want to um need to say that you that you will reopen the public hearing that you're just adjourning for for right. this next bit, but you will be reopening the public hearing. Well, we'll reopen the public hearing if the motion to accept the withdrawal is not approved and we'd be back with them. We continue the public hearing. Yep. All so right. Um, end the discussion. We're voting to end the hearing where okay. there's discussion and um, input from the applicant. We're voting and then we're voting to open the meeting where the board would among, discuss amongst themselves. And so... Uh, if you may, so if the yep. board has any sort of clarifying questions, I think now would be a good time to be had or um, is that correct? Before you close the public be, hearing or during the public hearing? We can ask those clarifying questions um, during the meeting, but it's better to ask them during a public hearing if you have questions. Okay, so let's, proceed to the vote on the previously stated motion, which was a motion to adjourn the public hearing on the, on the request to withdraw without prejudice and open a public meeting on the same matter. It's a roll call vote. We've had a, uh, um, Mr. Maxfield, do you make that motion again? Uh, so moved. Who seconds? Second. Mr. Meadows? It's a roll call vote. Chair votes aye. Mr. Langsdale. Aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Uh, motion passes. We're now in a public meeting to consider the request of the applicant to withdraw the application for a special permit without prejudice. Is, are there people have questions, uh, discussions and comments? Mr. Maxfield. I think uh, I think we should deny the request. Um, I think over the past several months, we we've gathered a lot of evidence. We have a solid proposal before us that I, I think we can vote uh, with conditions one way or another. If we wanted to, we can deny it. If we don't want um, to pass it, but either way, I think we have uh, the materials needed to make a decision one way or the other. Um, and I think that the board should move forward and we should come to a vote on this map. So I think we should uh, deny this request. Any other comments? Mr. Langsdale? I agree. Ms. Parks? <clears throat> Mr. Meadows? I, I, I don't know that I feel ready to um, vote on the project because I have some concerns about the project that 
I don't know if they were fully answered or they weren't fully answered for me. And so I'm not feeling as comfortable about voting on the project right now. Mr. Meadows, you were. Uh, you my, my comment would be primarily about the last letter from Mr. Schreiber that um, in, in which he indicated that an architect would be necessary for this. Uh, I, I'm not suggesting that that's the best route, but if it is left open as an open issue and we vote, um, you know, we vote on this, it, it could end up uh, causing problems after this vote if we, if we don't ask for everything that, that is needed for the project. Mr. Langsdale. Uh, I would ask, uh, like to ask uh, Ms. Parks, what are those concerns that haven't been answered for you? So one of them is about the management plan and about how that would work if it weren't owner occupied. So if it were um, four unrelated people and one of them were the property manager, how, how would that work? So I have concerns about that. I also have concerns about eight people on the property. Um, I know that there, I, I don't remember if there was like a, a range of six to eight people. Um, but that feels like um, a lot of people on that property. Um, I'm concerned about a non-permeable surface for the parking. I'm wondering if it's possible to do a permeable parking surface. Um, I'm concerned because the original house isn't finished and I would feel more comfortable with the project if the, if the main house were completely finished. Um, I, um, I guess I just had a lot of experience with people not finishing things. And so it concerns me that the main house isn't finished yet. Um, I did have a concern about uh, the um, having uh, the architectural, um, an, uh, I guess it's a, a licensed architect designing the project. I don't, I don't know, I just haven't looked into it. So those are some of the concerns I have. I just, I wasn't 100% comfortable with, with those things. Mr. Langsdale, before I recognize you, I just wanna express my concerns about the application. Uh, generally, too, I'm, I have concerns about the number of people on that uh, residence on that small piece of property. And I'm concerned about the effects upon the neighborhood, um, whether we were de detrimental or not. I also am not sure that the, as Ms. Parks was, I'm not sure about the, um, the drawings and the, if we need additional, we would need additional information, additional drawings and a more, um, so I don't, a more complete um, set of drawings. I think before we go, or a waiver from a request for a waiver, if we want to approve that, or the drawings. Uh, the permeability, I'm, I originally had a real problem with the groundwater. I had a, I, I had a real concern about the, um, the groundwater runoff, um, but I think that, um, the, the study done in the, in the discussion with uh, Mr. Steeles, I am less concerned about that than I was. Generally, I think that the applicant has to be, if we do not uh, allow him to withdraw this and it continues to be an open issue, the applicant has to be prepared to, uh, could be asked to provide more information. It might require more expense on his, his part or their part. And I'm not sure that it's up to the applicant to decide that if they want it or not. But I don't think that, it, in my opinion, I'm not sure that I don't think that this would uh, proceed without additional time, effort, and perhaps cost to the applicant. And lastly, with allowing the applicant to withdraw without denial uh, means that he can go back, uh, work on this, and present it again at another time. If we uh, keep it open, if he wants to, he can he can go back reassess his, um, his designs and come back before the board at a later point in time. And I don't think that would be deemed to be um, frivolous or um, um, 
it wouldn't be um, inappropriate to come back with a, with a more complete and better um, application if he so chooses. And so for that reason, I'd like to give the applicant the opportunity to, to, uh, to withdraw at his request and um, do it without denial or without, um, um, without, with prejudice, without prejudice. I know the neighbors are expressing a concern about that. They would like to have this denied with prejudice, which would preclude a similar proposal from the applicant for the next two years. And I do not feel that that's appropriate or needed. I think you, you tend to have that only when you have frivolous or um, sort of malicious applications that tend to, to um, um, take up the time of the board. And I don't think this is the case at all. I think this is an honest, honest attempt to um, do something with this property and it's done with all the good intentions. The board just may have a different feeling about whether it's um, appropriate or not. So for those reasons, I would, I would support the motion to um, allow the a withdrawal without prejudice. Mr. Langsdale, you were you had your hand up. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, first of all, the, the main house, uh, as Ms. Park said, isn't finished. I, I don't know what that means. Um, the outside needs to be repaired, but the applicant has already said that that's part of the process and certainly would be a condition. Um, the photographs that we've had of the inside, uh, they have made uh, a, a, a lot of uh, uh, additions and uh, everything. The other thing is we keep talking, we keep talking about the, uh, the runoff from this parking lot and the uh, town engineer has looked at it and okayed it with the plan. One of the things that we've heard constantly at the beginning of this was that the property to the south of this property, 275, has had a lot of problems with water in their basement, which is a runoff from 275. So if nothing is done, that will continue. So if there's a parking lot with permeable uh, concrete, which as we have talked, dealt with before, plus the plans for the uh, runoff that the applicant has presented, it's only going to be a lot better. I, and if the town engineer has already said it's adequate, why are we still talking about this runoff? It, it, I, it doesn't make sense to me. The runoff has been has is being taken care of. Mr. Maxfield. One of my concerns here too, um, really about withdrawing this um, without, uh, without prejudice here is I think we've spent a lot of time here in the public hearing and we haven't really had a lot of time to discuss amongst uh, the board here about some issues that um, may be insurmountable, um, such as, you know, this being an undersized lot for, you know, even one building now it's, it's, it's two buildings on there. Sure. There's two structures, but we here on the board haven't even really gotten into that issue. If let's say all other concerns are, are addressed, how does the board feel about that? There's nothing Mr. Mendelson can do to change the size of the lot. Would that be something that ultimately the board would deny this project for? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mendelson withdraws, spends more time and money, comes back to the board, ultimately just to have it get denied because of the lot size. Why didn't we just do that now in this meeting? Why did we, we send it back? Um, is one concern that I have of, of that going backwards or, or of withdrawal. And two, um, I think we've been working on this for, for since October, five, six months now that, that we're at. And I know prior to coming on to the ZBA, you know, I would hear stories of people who come before the, the Amherst ZBA and then it's just, uh, you know, roadblock after roadblock after roadblock never gets anywhere. And then they withdraw their application without ever getting a decision. And, and I frankly don't, don't want us to operate in that way. I think we, we've heard 
more than enough evidence to make a ruling one way or the other. Uh, I certainly think if we want to move forward in this, we will need to spend a lot of time working on conditions to address the concerns that we have here on the board. But I think we have the information we need to start working on that. And then if it turns out that we don't, or we run into issues that can't be rectified, then we can deny the project. But I, I think we really should move forward on this way and we should rule either up or down on this project and we should not uh, have this project withdrawn. Mr. Maxfield, I, you know, I take, I'm not sure that I agree. I, I don't agree with your um, characterization here. The, the ability of the applicant to withdraw this is in the applicant's interest if he wants. It's very possible that if we continue on with this, we would deny that the application. The application would then, the, the Mr. Mendelson then could not reapply for the next two years with essentially the same application. He couldn't, he could go back and try to modify it a bit, but the essentially, we, it'd be up to us to judge whether this would be a, um, a new, a, a substantially changed application or not. Secondly, I think that you're right that the um, board has not had time, has not had an opportunity to address, to, to talk among themselves to address the concerns. And that's the process, of the, that's the uh, effect of the hearing process. We've been in a public hearing, we haven't been in the public meeting yet where we typically do the, the conversations. And, bef and from that public hearing, Arguably, the applicant has heard that there's concerns that he that he may or may not be able to um, overcome, and it's the applicant's desire to withdraw that. Our desire, I think, as a public body, our desire to come to a decision should not be par paramount to the applicant's desire to continue the fight or not, or to continue the application and continue on with additional um, information. I think that if we do if we do go ahead and deny the motion to withdraw and continue with the application, uh, continue it. I think there'll be additional um, information needed from the board. It seems obvious from the discussion so far tonight. And I'm just not sure that Mr. Mendelson wants, and it's up to him. I'm not sure that Mr. Mendelson wants to continue to, to engage in that and, and spend the money on it. So this is at his request, at the applicant's request. And I, I feel that um, allowing them to go back and re, um, reapply if they wish at a later point in time is probably the best for him as well as for the board not having an open item on our on our agenda for a period of time. Mr. Langsdale. Yeah, you just stated that we as the board over this period of time, these months, have not had a chance to discuss this because everything has been about presentation in a public mm -hmm. hearing. So now we're sitting in a public meeting, finally. So now we're beginning to talk about what we think this project is about, what it can do, how it can be done. So mm -hmm. we have to finally ask the applicant what he wants to do. However, he deserves to hear the board discuss this entire matter before we ask him, do you want to go ahead with this? He has already said he wishes th that he did not have to withdraw. So I think it's incumbent upon us to have a real discussion among the five board members about what this project is, what if we're looking for anything else and uh, uh and i think it's uh, and then and then it's up to us to present all of that to him and say do you want to go ahead with this or not rather than us deciding whether he should go ahead with this or not well mr langsdale it's up it is up to him we're not deciding whether he should is. go ahead or not. It is. But we're not of deciding it is, whether. But he deserves our input, which he hasn't had up to well, this point. Can, but that's what we're doing right now. Ms. That's Park talked about yes. her. I talked about my concerns. Mr. Meadows talked about his. You had an opportunity, and so did Mr. Maxfield. His. And so we're continuing that process right now. Um, but in the end, it's up, it's up to Mr. Mendelson whether he wants to continue to push for um, 
uh, continue to have this before us or if he wants to withdraw without prejudice. I will say that I think that I would be in, I would be more, I would be um, of the opinion that we need to have more exact drawings, something either from a licensed designer, things that are to scale. I think that's gonna require um, some effort and, and uh, expense on his part at the very least. I know Mrs. Ms. Parks has questions about the drainage. I've had those somewhat um, ameliorated for me um, and the town engineer has spoken about that. I think the hardest thing is the number of people on the, I think the hardest thing is the number of residents on the property. I mean, you'd have eight residents on the property um, and in that neighborhood, I'm worried about the effect on the neighborhood. And we have to find that, um, that it does not have a, a detrimental, a more detrimental effect in the existing structure to be able to make the 9.22 um, determination and then to go through 3.3241 and then go to 10.38. I think there's a, uh, in my opinion, there's a huge hurdle and there's more, um, inf there's more information needed and there's more questions to be asked uh, that I, I think then, um, then I'm prepared to, to, to vote for this application at this point. Then excuse me, we have been through five months of this. Why haven't these things been addressed? Why, they, they, haven't, some of them ha why haven't these been addressed? I, I, I'm really frustrated by this. I mean, this whole thing about the drainage I mean, what are you looking for? The drainage would be Mr. Langsdale, far Mr. Langsdale. better than it would than it is now. Mr. Langsdale, we did address it. The we parking talked at the last, far better than it is now. Mr. Langsdale, at the last meeting, we even thought about having a, a peer review. We talked with Jason Skeels. He said a peer review would not give us any additional information. He reviewed the matter again, and he said that he thought it was adequate, right? I think the difference between a permeable um, a permeable driveway and a, um, a flat driveway, a pure asphalt driveway is little. There's very little difference in the permeability of the water with, with these permeable pavers and just asphalt. And so I think even if we require that, it might be marginally different um, and marginally beneficial to the abutter, but I'm, not, I'm just not sure that it would make much difference. And, then why, and it then really why are there questions still about the drainage? Ms. Parks raised the question about the drainage, and I had questions beforehand, but she missed. But, Parks but what are those questions? Is what I'm asking. Now that we've given up, been given all this information, what are the questions? Why are the questions still there about the drainage? Uh, just a second, Ms. Ms. Pollock. Um, so I just wanted to clarify think, something about the stormwater management um, discussion item. Um, so th the way that things were uh, left off with the town engineer was um, putting a pause on on having a peer review for the stormwater, but to have the professional engineer Bucky Sparkle to submit his hydrological calculations for determining the proposed uh, stormwater. Um, and so it is my understanding that that information has not been provided to the town engineer as of yet. Um, so that would still need to be provided um, if this you know, project were to be, um, this application process were to be uh, uh, carried on. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. And then I also just wanted to say since um, uh, Attorney Bard, I believe, had um, um, something that he uh, wanted to contribute. Um, he is calling from the airport, so um, I wanted... Let's, let's let him get, get in. Yeah, so um, Joel, I, I believe, let me press that. Uh, let's see here if that will work. Um, you might need to press star six or star nine. I, I seem to forget. Okay, here we go. There we go. Hi, Joel. Uh, Hello, Mr. Chairman. Yes, hi, yes. everyone. I apologize for the background noise. Uh, actually, the comment I would have made, I think, has been addressed, particularly by the chair, but I'll make it again. Uh, and that is simply to point out that if the board votes to allow this to be withdrawn without prejudice, the applicant can choose to proceed and try to address the issues as he thinks best and come back. So it doesn't cut it off entirely. The whole point of allowing it to be withdrawn without prejudice is to give the applicant more freedom, if you will, and obviously not have to wait for two years uh, and come back if he so chooses. So it, 
big sentiment comments suggesting that a vote to allow this withdrawal essentially shuts off the project uh, isn't accurate because it puts it fully in the applicant's hands to decide whether to pursue or not and simply not face the penalty if he withdraws now. And, and that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Bard. Uh, Mr. Maxfield. I mean, the question really here for me is going to be, um, I feel that we have enough information that we could um, begin working on conditions and seeing if we can reach a conclusion or not. Um, but if, the, if enough of the board doesn't feel that's the case, if enough of the board feels that we would need to impose additional costs on the applicant, uh, it sounds like this is something that the applicant does not want to do. In that case, I would support uh, the withdrawal with, without prejudice, but I, I think we have enough information now. If the, if the applicant withdraws, comes back to us and addresses all of the concerns that have been raised throughout the public hearing over these, these past five months and comes back to us at a later date, there will be a new set of concerns that are raised and a new set of why these can't be here. I know originally when this first came in, one of the, the public comments I believe we received from, I believe it was Mr. Rosnoy had said specifically that he could support this project if uh, it was smaller in scale and it was done by a professional engineer. It is smaller in scale and it was done by a professional engineer. And I see his signature here now on the, on the, the letter to us saying that we should uh, withdraw this only with prejudice. So I'm not seeing, uh, if, if they come back to us, it's, it's gonna be a new set of concerns that are raised. It's not gonna be new information that we need that's, that's going to help us. I think it's just going to be, we should, we should use the information that we have now and vote on the project one way or another. We might feel that we, we can't address these concerns. We might feel there's no conditions that we can put on this to make this a workable project. But I think that's something the CBA has enough information to do, and I think we should do that. But if enough board members disagree, we think we, we can't go forward without imposing additional costs, then I would like to hear that. And if that's the case, then I, I will support this, um, this motion to withdraw. Ms. Pollock, you have your hand yeah. raised. Yeah, so in addition to what I had said about um, the applicant uh, was asked by planning staff uh, and by the town engineer to submit hydrological calculations for the storm water in order for the town engineer to provide a more comprehensive review of of the storm water um, uh, for the for this project. In addition, um, you know, based from the last ZBA meeting, which was on February 11th, the uh, board members asked uh, for the applicant to submit um, a photo image of the proposed parking barrier and provide more information regarding this along Strong Street and to include evaluation of its safety. Uh, someone uh, of the board also asked uh, to uh, about uh, provide a spec sheet for a bike rack and show its location on the up on an updated site plan. Uh, uh, the board also asked for uh, provide a list of all proposed site and building building improvements that the property owner is expected to conduct in 2021. Uh, the, the board um, two meetings ago asked that the applicant review the management plan um, and, um, and the applicant did not provide that at the last meeting. The board asked at two meetings ago, uh, two more items I'm about to say, which is have Pioneer P Property Services LLC representative give testimony to the board about rules and responsibilities and have a, a, a Pioneer Property Services LLC representative review business um, uh, portfolio and explain staff levels for property management company. And, and that information still hasn't been presented to, to, the, um, to the board. Um, and then in, in, in this list that I provided the applicant in an email correspondence um, after the Feb February 11th meeting, uh, which is listing all this, was uh, please confirm that the submitted building plans compile with the requirements of section 3.116 of the Amherst zoning uh, rules and regulations. If the submissions do, do not meet these standards, the applicant may request and the board may consider a waiver provided the board finds that there is sufficient detailed 
provided on the building plans to render a decision. The board may also make additional conditions of the pro approval related to the building plans. So I just wanted to point this out that there is some, um, at least in the previous meeting meetings, the board um, did have more um, sort of questions um, and information needed by the applicant. I think what um, the delineation of points that Ms. Pollock just made indicate that the applicant does have some specific things that they're supposed that things that the board requested. And it is in my judgment, and we, if the applicant disagrees, he, I would allow him to state that. In my judgment, he looked at those, the applicant looked at those additional requirements and decided it's more than he wants to go through to get this thing approved. Um, if that's, if that's the case, then that is, um, then I think we should honor his request for withdrawal without prejudice. I know that the, I, everybody wants their project to be approved. That's totally, that's very understandable. You think you have a good project. Um, there's additional information that the board needs to, that I think that the board needs before we could approve that project. And it's up to the applicant, whether he wants to continue to uh, engage with those, um, with those engaged to provide those requirements, whether it's additional costs, whether it's time and effort on his part or whatever, but that's up to him. And if he wants to withdraw it and come back and, re and um, reset with an additional, knowing what we've asked in a very specific uh, list of questions and requests, then I think we should allow him to do that, to come back and to meet with those, uh, to meet those requirements for the next time, or he should or go ahead now and take the risk of the cost and the risk of whether the project will be approved or not. Mr. Mendelson, I did see your hand up. This is clarification, just if you want to clarify something. Um, yeah, just, we, do not, we do not take public comment uh, in the um, public meeting, but since I uh, attempted to characterize your position, I want to clarify what it actually is. Yeah, no, I just wanted to clarify um, some of the, the lists that Maureen spoke about with the, uh, the business overview, the management plan, um, what else? Uh, staffing levels. Um, that was covered in Mr. Sparkle's presentation. If you go back and look at it, because um, I had a discussion with Bucky before that um, that meeting, and I said that I would prefer him to present information about our company and um, the management plan. So he did attempt to do that, and um, I feel like the management plan you know, is somewhat detailed. And for me to, um, you know, explain it in detail would entail basically reading it. And I, I feel like that document um, should be more of like a collaborative type of thing. Because I, I don't have, I mean, this type of management plan hasn't been done that I know, you know, that I know of uh, before. And so I was kind of just invent you know, inventing it as I went along, but um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right, other comments from board members? I, Mr. Meadows. Simply say, Mr. Judge, that I, I agree with um, everything that you've said. Uh, I understand, I think I understand where Mr. Maxwell's coming from. Um, I think that there is an, one unfortunate insurmountable uh, situation here, and that is the size of the lot, the number of people that would be living on there, and the uh, the fact that it that the proposal does not really uh, go coincide with the rest of the neighborhood. In my judgment, um, I am not very good as a soothsayer, but my sense. Uh, of what has been proposed, and maybe Maureen could help us here, for the town for the rezoning would allow this to be done by right. Um, so it's a little bit of a quandary there, but um, I, uh, to your point, Mr. Maxwell, I was just expressing myself so you would understand. 
Other comments from board members? Ms. Parks. I guess I, I, again, I would say, I mean, it's, my issue is not with the runoff so much that more it has to do with a large piece of asphalt in the backyard. And oh, I didn't know God, you was. fucking idiot. Keith, you're not muted. <laughs> but um, I didn't, I had not heard that it was permeable. So I, I don't know if I missed that, that it was, that that was a discussion that was gonna be permeable. So. Ms. Parks, so, uh, yeah. I'll just clarify that while, while you're still, while you made the yeah. issue. Um, it, it isn't permeable at present. Okay. Um, your, your suggestion was that it, if, it, if we made it permeable, it'd be better. And my response to that was in talking to both Mr. Sparkle and Mr. Skeels, it turns out that the flow across gra um, gravel, asphalt, and grass, hard, um, regular grass, isn't that different and that it doesn't slow it down. So if you have a semi-permeable um, material, such as pavers with holes in them, it will be somewhat better, but not very much better than uh, it would be just with asphalt. So that, I, I don't think I was very clear on that and I, that may have led to the confusion that you okay. had. Yeah, I, I guess for me, it's just a matter of how it looks as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I, it's, again, it's the number of people for me. And so I don't feel comfortable with the project right now. And so, you know, I'm trying to think right now, I'm thinking what conditions, in what way would this project make me feel comfortable? is the way that I'm thinking about it right now. And I don't know if I have the answer to that. I don't, I don't know what conditions would make me feel completely comfortable. And so I don't feel ready. And, and I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, end up denying the project when, you know, other things may change. So I just don't feel ready to do that. Got it. Okay. I, I, the last statement I've made is I think we have a list of things that um, the applicant would know would be, need to be presented to the board, whether it's under a resubmission or whether we continue this process. So I don't think it's some amorphous, ambiguous um, thing that he has to, that the applicant has to respond to. Mr. Mendelson has a very specific request. Um, I think some of those since February have been put on pause because we had the uh, act, the request to withdraw. And so therefore a lot of that wasn't done since that period of time, such as Mr. Sparkle's resubmission of um, his hydrological um, calculations and other things. I think we, on that point, we did, in deference to the applicant, we did not push for Mr. Sparkle to engage in some, to build some time that he would have been then send back and bill back to the applicant. So, or did we go for a peer review at that point when it seemed like Mr. Uh, Mendelson was gonna withdraw the application? I'd also say just one more time that I, in my, my, peer, my time here on the board, when an applicant gets to the point where they wish to withdraw and it's not, and we've had a few of those recently um, for a host of good reasons. When the applicant wants to withdraw, we typically permit that to happen. And we only, do, we only deny that op opportunity or condition it with prejudice if we think that it is a frivolous, malicious, some kind of, or it's gonna take up, ridiculously take up time of the board or the public uh, in ways that are not um, beneficial. And so that is not what we, I don't think we have that here. And I think that to the extent that Mr. Mendelson has, has taken a look at what his, it's been requested by the board as a list from the town staff. He's decided that he does not, if he's decided he does not want to continue with this application, it is, in my opinion, we should allow him to withdraw it to um, get back together again with his, his uh, consultants, if he wishes, and come up with another application that can be resubmitted. And I think that's the best, it's the cleanest slate, and, we can, and, and that seems to me to be the best thing to do. Mr. Maxfield. I guess um, I'll just try to kind of wrap up everything I've been talking about this whole time and, and then we can you know, hopefully move forward here with this. But um, like I said, I, I, I think as I said before, with the, with the evidence that we have before us, I, 
certainly couldn't vote on this today. I, I, I definitely need to work amongst the board with uh, what conditions we'd actually want to put on this project. Um, and I think that would be definitely a, a, a process that we'd have to get through. But I, I, I believe that we would be able to get through that with the evidence that we have, with the project that we have in front of us. And I personally believe we could get to a project that I would support voting for and approving. Um, I don't know if the rest of the board feels that way. If, um, if, if people have concerns about, like I said, specifically the lot size, nothing Mr. Mendelson can do about that. I mean, the best time to raise that concern was four months ago. The second best time to raise that concern is now. Um, Cause if, if nothing can be done about that, no amount of, of uh, engineering can, can overcome that. And I, we should um, accept the, the motion to withdraw, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I, I feel like we've got just, you know, small mom and pop uh, property management trying to come before us, trying to live the, uh, the American dream of getting financially independent, you know, uh, secure retirement and said they're, they're living the American reality, which has just been cumbersome bureaucracy and roadblock after roadblock. I, I think we have the information to, to, to move forward. And I think we should work on conditions. But like I said, I, I guess I just like to hear from the, from the rest of the board kind of one last time. Do you think do we not think that we have the information to begin working on conditions and seeing if we can come to a vote on this? Um, if not, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to support the motion. Mr. Meadows. I move the question. A previous question is moved. Um, is there a second? The, the vote is not, the motion is not debatable. I second the motion. Um, Previous question is is um, up for vote. Chair votes aye. Mr. Langsdale. What? I'm sorry. What is the? The motion is on the previous question. The previous question motion what? would require would um, if passed would require that we go into a vote on the motion before us, which is to um, approve to end the discussion and to move to the motion to approve the with request to withdraw without prejudice. So the previous question ends the discussion. If passed. Okay. No. No. Ms. Parks. Um, aye. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Maxfield. No. Mr. Meadows. Aye. The vote is three to two. The previous question is ordered. Uh, discussion on the application, the motion to withdraw is ended. Um, There's a motion before us to um, permit the, to approve the request to withdraw without prejudice. Um, and that's up for a vote now. So everybody understands the motion. This is on the no. question to withdraw. But it, please, please okay. state it. Restate it. Please. Sure. You bet. The motion is to permit the, to approve the request from the applicant to withdraw the application without prejudice. Any further questions on procedure? All right. Um, the chair votes aye. Mr. Langsdale? No. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. The motion carries, it requires three votes. It's a majority vote for this, uh, for this motion. The motion carries. Um, we will, so you, the, the application has been withdrawn. Uh, we have approved the application to be withdrawn without prejudice. Um, we have two other items of business. And at the end of the meeting, we will um, adjourn the public meeting and close the public hearing on this matter uh, in our final motion but I'd like to move on to uh, the two other items on the agenda. The first of which is public comments on matters that are not before the board tonight. Um, so again, it, it's for items not on for the items agenda. Not, not, beyond, not on the agenda tonight. Okay. Um, I think Mr. Ron, Ronzoy, um, hold on a second. Mr. Rosnoy. 
Can you state your name and address? Richard? Richard, Richard Rosnoy, can you hear me? Yes. I thought we were going back into public hearing before a vote was, set, was going to happen. Now, no. we, now the chair says you've already voted and, and then you're going back into public hearing? No, we're, you decide, Mr. Rosnoy, you decide, we decide the, whether we vote on the motion or not during a public meeting. The public hearing is, is what we started with, present, presentation. The board then moves to a public meeting. That's where they make the decision on a motion and we have discussion. We, the only reason that we're going to go back to the public hearing is to close it out. And we will do that all in one motion at the end of the meeting. So we close out the public hearing on this matter and we close out the public meeting on for the other two matters that we have on the agenda uh, currently. So the, wow. for, for all intents and purposes, the motion, the, the matter is withdrawn. Wow. While I have the microphone, I need to clarify the record and correct a misrepresentation about me by one of your members. Mr. Um, Mr. Osmer, we're it has, it has, ne we're it has never, be never been my, my position that I would approve this project with a properly certified engineer or architect certifying this, Mr. Maxfield. Mr. Rosner, we're, early, we're at the, we're at the point early, where we're, on, we're discussing items not on the agenda tonight. Yeah. It doesn't um, matter. And, and I, been, and I, it's time it for doesn't your, matter. I have been misrepresented by your board, okay. Mr. Judge. Then, and then my reputation think, is on the line. And I need to... Mr. Mr. Rosnoy, I think I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. Mr. Rosnoy, I think we only want to hear on matters not before the board tonight. I have I been misrepresented your, uh, by a okay. member of your board, Mr. Judge, and we need to clarify the record. So you can do that at some other- I will not have it, my professional judgment slandered. Mr. Mr. Rosnoy, we're done with, hopefully we're done with this, was, this conversation right now. Um, we can talk on other items. Hopefully, well, this is another item. No, this is not. It's a matter of whether one of your- what, it's All right, a matter Mr. Rosnoy, we- board re recognizes- chair has the, the chair has the ability to try to-, to uh, restrict comments that are not uh, germane to the topic before us, which is items not before the, not on the agenda tonight. We're, we're, we'll go ahead for the next, uh, if there's anybody else that wants to, to comment, public comments on items not before, not about the items that we had on the agenda tonight. Um, All right. Uh, I don't think there's any other, oh, yeah. correct. I don't yep. see any other, all right. I know uh, the other item is that I, I noted that um, there's an interest in having an administrative meeting uh, to consider ZBA comments on bio, zoning bylaw changes. I think, um, Ms. Parks, you had mentioned that you would be interested in having an administrative meeting to talk through some of that, perhaps having uh, town staff go through some of the, be there to help us if we want to um, have a, com a ZBA comment either as a board or individually. Um, and is that something that you would like to have done? Well, we could do that. I know that, that they were looking for comments um, or you know, if there were things in the, in the zoning bylaws that needed clarification. And I think that we've run into a couple of things that it would be nice to get more clarification on so that when we're making decisions, you know, we're not trying to interpret what the zoning law is. So I don't know if other people are interested. I can also try to pursue this on my own. Um, but you know, uh, Ms. Ms. Parks, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea for two reasons. Number one, although some of the things that um, are maybe unclear may not be what is currently being considered by the town in terms of zoning changes, it doesn't hurt for us to make a list of things that are confusing or inat or, uh, or um, um, not clear and ambiguous to the board. Uh, but I think that would be helpful. And even if it's not um, considered by the town council for a period of time, it's still good to have our experience communicated to them. I also think that there are, there are issues that we see as the Zoning Board of Appeals 
that, that, that not other, that other uh, individuals do not see, other boards and councils do not see. And to the extent that we find that there are um, our, uh, zoning bylaws that create a housing problem or create work for us that make it difficult for us to do our work, uh, I think it would be helpful to point those out as well. So um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to have a meeting, an administrative meeting on that. Um, Maureen, when is the, the next, when is um, our next meeting? Okay. And do we have items on the agenda? So let's see here. The next meeting would be Thursday, April 8th. And as of yet, we don't have any items on the agenda. So um, if that works for folks, we could um, hold an administrative meeting. Does that provide enough time for you, Tammy, to uh, Ms. Parks to go through some of this? Um, Mr. Mora and Ms. Pollock, can you be at the meeting for that? I also guess I'd like to ask you if uh, staff, if there's still efforts to change the housing policy of the town and whether we should um, uh, comment on that. I know that the CRC, the Community Resources Committee had transmitted um, an early draft. We've not gotten an, an, an updated draft. I don't know if that's something that with everything else going on is just be put on the wayside or if that's something that we ought to review again. Rob, do you know where that is at? Yeah, I, I think at the moment, the, uh, the zoning bylaw amendments have uh, you know, taken priority. Uh, that's still something that you'll see back with the CRC, I think, in the coming months for further discussion. Uh, so I would, you know, encourage you to, to look at the latest drafts and, and, you know, formulate any comments or questions that would be uh, forwarded to the, to either through staff or to the CRC. But uh, I think the next couple of meetings, you might see it uh, focused on zoning bylaw amendments. Rather than housing policy, the housing policy. Right. All right. Are there any other um, comments or questions from the board from board members? Okay, so Maureen, we can schedule the administrative meeting for April eighth, and Correct. Um, at the um, usual time at six o'clock. Six o'clock. So that's a, for everybody's information. That's a public meeting that we'll have. It's an administrative meeting to deal with this matter, and um, to the extent that you have questions. I'd encourage you to contact um, Maureen and raise those so that we can be so that they, the staff can be prepared to answer your questions, um, and so we can make this as productive as possible. That would be great. All right. Um, if there are no other matters, um, I would entertain a motion to a, to close the public hearing and adjourn the public meeting on um, tonight. Do I have a, is there a motion, Mr. Maxfield? Is there a second? Second. And for clarification, we're closing the public hearing on ZBA 2021-03 uh, 20, Pioneer Services, LLC. Um, it requires a roll call vote and no discussion on the motion to adjourn. Um, chair votes aye. Mr. Langsdale? Aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we are adjourned and we'll see you all on April 8th. Thank you all. Thank you.